Are you fine? Not scared or panicked? I'm fine. Something like that isn't enough to ruffle my feathers. I was able to ditch that guy no problem. But that does beg the question. Who was it that was following us? When we split up to lose him, it looked like he went after you, Judy. What amazes me more than anything is that you realized that he was following us. I would have never noticed that someone was behind us. Huh. I have eyes in the back of my head. It's going to take more than sulking in the shadows to be able to get to me. Yeah, I suppose so. Your self-confidence is one of the things that I love about you. But is there any reason that someone would want to follow you? Did you piss off any patients or their family members? Well, nothing comes to mind off the top of my head. I'm highly respected by my colleagues, and I'm well loved by all patients I work with. Again, that's not really something that you say about yourself, but that seems to be true whenever I go pick you up. True. We were being followed, but I didn't feel any animosity from his gaze, and there was no aggression in his stance. You truly are something else, aren't you? It was so exciting. That was the first time in my life I've ever been followed. I felt like Jason Bourne. I admit that there was a bit of a thrill in it, but I wish you would understand that it could have been dangerous. I know I may be overthinking things, but you know how much I worry about you. For the foreseeable future, I will be picking you up by car. This isn't up for debate. Come on, I'll be fine. I can defend myself. In a straight fight, I know there's no way you could lose. But if they attacked you from behind with a weapon, then it would be game over. For my own peace of mind, please wait for me to pick you up by car, okay? Alright, you are too sweet on me. I can't believe this is happening right before our wedding. I hope this doesn't jinx anything or cause any other problems. That's right. Let's go to your hometown so I can introduce myself to your father. Yeah, my dad is, to put it nicely, a hard-headed, proud blue blood that puts on airs in front of everyone he meets. Nicely? Coming from you, that's quite the burn. It sounds like a great challenge, but I doubt there's a family that wouldn't want me in their family. Again, where you get your self-confidence puts me in awe. But you're right. The rest of my family is already dying to meet you. My father is always going on about upholding the family name and how we should be careful about what kind of people we interact with. It was always embarrassing to hear him go on tirades about it. I just wanted to be a normal kid and enjoy what everyone else was doing. Can you believe that he called us modern-day aristocrats? Wow, that story is cringe. I know, right? I honestly thought about not going to visit him because he can be so pretentious and hard to deal with. Somehow he sniffed out who I was dating and demanded that he see you face to face. A sixth sense or some stupid thing like that, he said. Well, in most cultures, it would be unthinkable not to introduce yourself to the family, especially when we're about to get married. So I'm cool with it. Don't worry too much. You know me. I'll make it work out, and it'll be fine. I know you can get through any situation. I just don't want the experience to leave a bad flavor in your mouth. It's still not too late to pretend we never got his summons and leave him to stew on his high horse. No, we gotta do what we gotta do. I wanna do things right. It doesn't matter who the other person is. But we should get to know each other's families. Because marriage is not just the pairing of two people but two whole families. You're straight a shooter as they come. And of course, you're right again. I suppose I should just sit back and watch the sparks fly as the two most stubborn people I know meet for the first time. Soda and popcorn recorded, uploaded, and went viral. I'll be fine. I'm an adult, and I can control myself. Let's just hurry up and meet up at home. You worry too much. Do you want that guy to pick up on my trail again? Oh, jeez, no. Yeah, let's go home. Judy, where are you now? Are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm fine. I just went outside for a little bit to cool my jets and clear my mind. 
Wow, that went far worse than I could have ever imagined. Trying to pour a pot of hot coffee on me was something that even surprised me. Thank God your reflexes are so fast. It's like watching a Jedi in action. You started moving at the same time he began his stupidity. It was like you knew it was coming. It's not that big of a deal. I didn't see him since he was in my blind spot. But I felt that something was off. That only happens right before someone tries to hurt you. I guess that only makes me seem more like a Jedi, right? Yes! That or Spider-Man. That's me. By the way, where are you? I left right after you to follow, but can't see you anywhere. Oh, I'm at a park in front of the forest, sitting on a bench. Come and get me? I'm a bit parched. So can you bring me something to drink on your way? Wait, Willow Park? That's more than a mile away. It's been less than five minutes. It's not even a straight line from here. It is if you go through some yards and gardens. Did you really straight shoot it through a mile of residential units? Parkour! My god, you're amazing. Whatever. Hurry up and pick me up. Yeah, sorry. I'll grab my keys and pick you up. Judy, this is Albert's father, Ryan. Uh, mind telling me how you got my WhatsApp ID? That's not important right now, but I know that I can do a lot more than that. From here on out, I will not allow you onto my property a second time. Of course, that includes ever seeing or contacting my son Albert again. Really? You got a valid reason to outcast me? When you come from a name as prestigious as ours, it would be unthinkable to take an uneducated little girl like yourself into our great family. You never even graduated from a university. There is no way I could let my grandchildren be raised by someone who could barely get a GED. No worries there, pal. I have no intention of ever being in the same room as you ever again. However, I will marry Albert, as promised, with or without your blessing. Never. Who would be foolish enough to ever marry you? Your family is poor as dirt. How could you imagine standing eye to eye with a family of our caliber? How dare you think you could pollute my bloodline with your filthy peasant DNA? Ooh, them be fighting words, old man. But I couldn't care less about how much you badmouth my family. It's true that my family was not well-loved by any means, but we were happy and had all our needs met by parents who loved us, probably because we didn't have the same idiotic family members spouting off about our special status as a noble family. To be talked to in such a way by the proletariat is insulting to the greatest degree. Boo-hoo. Why don't you go and wind up your country club friends and have them stroke your ego until you feel better? Because an inner city girl hurt your fragile feelings. Ah. On the other hand, you talk about being from such a great family. But do you walk the walk? In what way are you more successful than a commoner like me? I graduated from an Ivy League school and was immediately hired by a Fortune 500 company. With my achievements, I became the youngest vice president in the company's history. How about that? Does a peon like you have a resume like that? Oh, wow. Truly, a credit to your name. With a history like that, you can add trying to pour hot coffee over your son's fiancé and failing. Man, it's amazing what life throws at you and to see how you react to it. You should be grateful it was just a cup of coffee. I can't stand that not only are you trying to marry out of your class, but you have the gall to talk to me in such a disrespectful tone. I'm not asking you to stand for anything. Albert and I are getting married, so you can just leave me alone. I simply will not allow my son to marry a girl who has never graduated university. Oh, so you're a measure of nobility. 
Is it proportional to a person's academic achievements? You do understand how dumb and stuck up that sounds when you say it out loud, don't you? Shut your filthy mouth. Don't think you can change your station in life by trying to marry up into our family. Every single person in my family has graduated from university just to show you how much we value education. If you push me any further, I will not be held responsible for what happens to you. Look, I really don't care what you try to do or why you think threatening me is going to scare me off. That only works on your subordinates at work. And on the subject of universities, you do know that I graduated, right? Graduating at 19 years old is what you've said. That is not university. Little girl, that is called community college. You do understand the difference, don't you? One selects for society's future leaders, and the other provides basic courses so the masses don't embarrass themselves in public. You're simply a bad match for my son who's on the fast track for the good life and will bring so much honor to our family. And find a girl worth fighting for. Yes? What are you talking about? The weddings are off as far as I'm concerned, so get an education if you want to have a chance of marrying up for your spotty heritage. I skipped a few grades and finished med school at 19. Like I'd believe that. At 19, I graduated med school and then got a master's on the side. Just to kill some extra time. A master's at 19? Impossible! You should learn how to lie better. It would take superior genius to even come close to achieving that. A real lie needs to have a modicum of truth in it, or at least be somewhat believable. Playing along with your fantasy world for a little bit, why didn't you tell me this sooner? That might have bought you some time. When I did try to tell you, you decided to preempt me with aerial coffee entertainment followed by kicking me out of the house. I don't have time for gossip and fake news. So you want to add to your whopper and tell me that you're a doctor at some clinic? Almost. I'm the head of the pediatric department at the university hospital. You can drop the facade. It's not funny anymore, and I'm just sad now. I've already looked into your past to have your old past in front of me now. Least of all, I know you're not a doctor, so you can come clean with me. Oh, it's good to see a Christian keep his part of the bargain. How do you know Christian? It's fine and dandy to use private eyes to get info on a person. But you really should use people who you know are good at their jobs. It was like being tailed by a blind elephant over the savannah. It was cute. You can try to hide, but whenever I turned around, there he was. Poor effort. After I got tired of that game, I got behind him and he almost soiled himself when I grabbed him by the collar. I then persuaded him to tell me who his employer was. Impossible. He's a 30-year veteran with us and served in a recon unit in his youth. I've been relying on him for years and he's never made a mistake. You gotta be kidding. It was like playing peekaboo with an infant with no sense of space. Anyhow, I had him pass on false information to you in order to find out what kind of person you really are. I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt despite Albert's unflattering portrayal of you. So I told Christian to hide the fact that I'm a doctor. Albert and Christian both? Can you blame him? With your temperament and outlook? I've also taken the liberty to release our chat logs and the dirt I've dug up on you and your investors. What? Why would you do something so unnecessary? Well, according to your words, it would be unacceptable to allow Dirty blood to pollute the system, right? The same goes for business. One bad apple can cause the whole batch to go bad. Isn't that how the saying goes? 
You're saying I'm the problem? Impossible! I've done so much for the company. They wouldn't do anything to me, would they? Dino, tell that to the person who's going to be reviewing your case and deciding your fate. Telling me of your triumphs and tribulations is just a bother. Why would anyone at my company trust you? How could you even get anyone on the board's attention? I'm a very famous and popular doctor in higher circles. So I do have acquaintances in almost every industry. In fact, I've known about you for a while. I've not even told Alpert about this part of me. I'm about to teach you how to really get dirt on people. Haven't you had enough fun at my expense? How long must I put up with your blasphemy? Do you have any idea who you're dealing with? Have you any clue what I will do to you if you make me your enemy? Fully. Because I have no fear of some unemployed old man who got fired from his job for being a toxic lowlife. Fired? Who's been fired? Are you talking about me? Blackmail 101. Your termination is one of my demands for not releasing your dirty laundry to the world and tainting your company's good name. Any company would throw a useless president under the bus in order to maintain their quality in the public eye. That'd be a breach of contract on their part. How devious are you? Everything you're doing is illegal. Illegal, you say? I guess you would be an expert on what's illegal, wouldn't you? You know better than anyone that you should be terminated at the company. It can't be! As I said before, I've thoroughly investigated you. I wanted to know what I would be marrying into, just in case it could negatively affect me in some way. Albert is an angel and doesn't have a bad bone in his body. That comes from his mother's side. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about his paternal side. Be honest here. There is something you need to apologize to your company about, isn't there? That's unprovable, isn't it? How could you know? You're lying. You're just trying to entrap me. Really? Maybe I should talk to your wife first. I bet it would be hard to admit that to her, so I'll tell her in your steed. Stop. Fine. You win. My god, what are you? I may have temporarily transferred company funds to partake in the services of an escort enterprise. You paid for a whore using the company's money? That'll get you fired from any job. Wait, I had a good reason. I truly did. Yes, yes. You truly loved the girl and wanted to help her out of a bad situation. Yeah, yeah. You fell for the hooker with a giant heart of gold. But you, sir, are now Richard Gere. You do understand that admitting that you love another woman isn't going to be taken well by your family, right? And I know how serious about her you were by the amount of cash you dumped into her scheme. She said she would leave her boyfriend for me. She just needed money to free herself. I could afford it, but I couldn't withdraw an amount that large without drawing suspicion. So I planned to pay it back to the company little by little. See? It wasn't stolen. I just borrowed the company's money for a short time. In fact, I've already returned it in full. I know that as well. You aren't the type of person to stick your hand in the cookie jar without some way to separate yourself from any blame or wrong. While the books balance out at the end of the day, it doesn't change the fact that a bigot also tried his hand at a misappropriation of funds. You know what that means, right? Why are you so intent on messing up my life? You're going past the line of threats, all the way to plain cruel. I had no intention to go so far, but once I had you on the ropes, the adrenaline began to flow, and I was taught to always go in for the kill. You witch! 
Where are you? Get back here right now. Found by me. What do you intend to do, little old man? I will make you regret crossing me. Get back here so I can teach you a lesson you'll never forget. Lines fitting for a bargain bin gangster before the main character puts him in his place. Hardly the words meant for a beautiful young, strong headed woman like myself, unlike a crotchy old hidebound materialistic fogey. Whoa! I feel like the protagonist in a superhero movie. I feel a little sorry for you. But wait a tick, I'll be with you in two shakes. Well, we'll see if that mouth can spout the same poison after I'm done with you. You've had enough yet? Wanna go another round? I don't think the results will change, but the offer still stands. What are you? How are you so fast and strong? I'm as fit as a 30-year-old and was an amateur boxer through school. My dad was a drill sergeant and was a part-time UFC fighter to make ends meet. Since we could stand, he trained us all in self-defense and self-reliance. A UFC fighter? He pushed his reflexes, hand-eye coordination, and martial arts skills to the absolute limits a human body can handle. That discipline and focus he installed in me ended up helping in school as well. But I did surpass him in middle school and haven't lost to him since. He holds me as his greatest success, and still makes me come weekly to spar with him. So, as you can see, I'm not only a genius in academics, but a genius with my fists and feet as well. I only became a doctor because it helps others, pays well, and is relatively easy for me. Hubris much? It's only hubris when you lose. Until then, it's cold confidence. So now you know who I am. I'm a totally different class from you. You still want to cross me? Class? I was born into the most prestigious family in the state. What do you know of class? Wow. You still have a goal to speak of class. Then get ready for spring 1917, comrade. Albert's father, Ryan, was found unconscious on his front lawn after that huge disagreement. I mean, talk about a dramatic scene, right? It was like something out of a soap opera. Anyway, turns out that it wasn't the only thing going on with old Ryan. There was some serious evidence of embezzlement piling up against him too. So you can guess what happened next. His company wasted no time in giving him the boot. Yup. He was quickly and quietly terminated, leaving him high and dry. Now, as if that wasn't enough, all of this was like the final straw for his long-suffering wife. Can you blame her, though? I mean, the guy was not only unconscious on the front lawn, but he was also cheating on her. That's a recipe for disaster right there. So she did what any self-respecting woman would do in that situation. She filed for an immediate divorce. And boy, did she not hold back. She went for the big guns and claimed a huge alimony payment. Good for her, I say. Gotta secure that bag. But wait, it gets even juicier. The rest of Ryan's family, you know, his brothers, sisters, cousins and whatnot, they were absolutely disgusted by Ryan's actions. I mean, who wouldn't be? So they decided to cut him off completely. Can you imagine? They removed him from the family tree like he never existed. Ouch. That's gotta hurt. Meanwhile, here I am, welcomed into the family with open arms. I'm like the golden child, the prodigy daughter-in-law. They love me, and I love them right back. Now let's talk about Ryan's current situation. It's a really sad story, I tell ya. He's stuck living in this tiny, one-bedroom apartment, working as a night manager just to make ends meet. I mean, talk about a fall from grace. He used to be all high and mighty, preaching about the importance of bloodlines and stuff. And now look at him, scrubbing floors and cleaning up other people's messes. 
Life has a funny way of teaching lessons, doesn't it? But hey, enough about Ryan. Let's focus on the bright side of things. After all that drama and chaos, Albert and I found each other. We got married and guess what? We welcomed our first child into the world just a year later. It's like a fairy tale ending, you know? Both our families have come around and embraced us with open arms. They've put all that dirty business caused by that bigoted old man behind them. It's all about love and support now. And let me tell you, Albert, he is such a sweetheart. He always praises me. Saying that with me, our family has nothing to worry about. And you know what? It makes me feel so good. Because he's absolutely right. We've built a strong foundation of love and trust, and nothing can shake us. So yeah, life has its ups and downs, but as long as we have each other, we're unstoppable.